Dear friends, happy to meet you once again through this video. In the YouTube series of Foreign Travelers to South India, I am presenting about the envoy of Sultan Shah Rukh of Samarkand, Abd al Razak al Samarkandi, a Persian historian who visited India during 1442 to 1445 in the mid 15th century. This video will give a description of the city of Vijayanagar as seen by Razak. I have replaced Bijanagar with Vijayanagar for simple understanding. Account of the city of Vijayanagar and its seven surrounding fortifications. Abdul Rasak arrived at the city of Vijayanagar. There he saw a city exceedingly large and populous and a king of great power and dominion whose kingdom extended from the borders of Sarandip to those of Gulbarga and from Bengal to Malabar, a space of more than 1000 parasangs. The country is for the most part well cultivated and fertile and about 300 good seaports belong to it. There are more than 1000 elephants, lofty as the hills and gigantic as demons. The army consists of 11 lakhs of men. In the whole of Hindustan, there is no Raya more absolute than himself, under which domination the king of that country are known. The Brahmins are held by him in higher esteem than all other men. The book of Kalila and Dimna, than which there is no other more excellent in the Persian language, and which relates to a Raya and a Brahmin, is probably the composition of the wise men of this country. The city of Vijayanagar is such that the eye has not seen nor heard of any place resembling it upon the whole earth. It is so built that it has seven fortified walls, one within the other. Beyond the circuit of the outer wall, there is an esplanade extending for about 50 yards in which stones are fixed near one another to the height of a man one half buried firmly in the earth and the other half rises above it so that neither foot nor horse however bold can advance with facility near the outer wall. The fortress is in the form of a circle situated on the summit of a hill and is made of stone and mortar with strong gates where guards are always posted who are very diligent in the collection of taxes. The second fortress represents the space which extends from the bridge of the New River to the bridge of the Pass of Kara, to the east of the bridge of Rangina and Jakan, and to the western of the Garden of Zinbada and the village of Jason. The third fortress would contain the space which lies between the tomb of the Imam Fakhruddin Iza to the vaulted tomb of Muhammad Sultan Shah. The fourth would represent the space which lies between the bridge of Anjil and the bridge of Karat. The fifth may be reckoned equivalent to the space which lies between the garden of Jagan and the bridge of the river Jagan. The sixth fortification would comprehend the distance between the gate of the king and that of the Ferozabad. The seventh fortress is placed in the center of the others and occupies ground ten times greater than the chief market of Herat. It is situated in the palace of the king. From the northern gate of the outer fortress to the southern is a distance of two statued parangs and the same width represent to the distance between the eastern and the western gates. Between the first, second and the third walls there are cultivated fields, gardens and houses. From the third to the seventh fortress, shops and bazaars are closely crowded together. By the palace of the king there are four bazaars situated opposite to one another. That which lies to the north is the imperial palace or abode of the Rai. At the head of each bazaar there is a lofty arcade and magnificent gallery, but the palace of the king is loftier than all of them. The bazaars are very broad and long, so that the sellers of flowers, notwithstanding that they place high stands before their shops and yet able to sell flowers from both sides. Sweet-scented flowers are always procurable fresh in that city and they are considered as even necessary sustenance, seeing that without them they could not exist. The tradesmen of each separate guild or craft have their shops close to one another. The dwellers sell their rubies and pearls and diamonds and emeralds openly in the bazaar. In this charming area in which the palace of the king is contained, there are many rivulets and streams 
flowing through channels of cut stone polished and even i will stop here for now vijayanagar may be anegundi or hampi during the years of 1442 to 1445 described by razak this way i am presenting the content from the book name the history of india as told by its own historians the mohammedan period from the posthumous papers of sir hm eliot edited and continued by john dawson published in london in 1872 i have many more interesting facts told by razak we'll meet you soon with another video of his visit to vijayanagar until then thanks with wishes